All right, guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks to everybody who takes their time to leave us a rating or review. If you've never done that, we would sure appreciate it. The best way we can grow this podcast is for the people who already like it to share it to other people. So if you have a minute to do that, we would greatly appreciate it. Today, we have a great episode. We're going to be talking about my favorite arm exercises for hypertrophy and your five favorite leg exercises mm -hmm. for hypertrophy. But before we get into that, let's give an update. Okay. I think last week's podcast was sponsored by ACL. I know, oh. I know we talked about it. it was <laughs> I don't remember if they were the official sponsor or not, mm -hmm. but we went. We were... I was hoping that we were going to have a different sponsor this week. Oh, why? Who are you thinking? I was, I was thinking that Jared Leto was going to sponsor the <laughs> podcast. Okay, well, let's get to that. <laughs> but last week we were talking about, are we going to go to ACL? Because last year we went, you had your phone pickpocketed, yeah. you got sick. For a long time afterwards it's been extremely dry here we were worried about the drought conditions i actually did some research and i found that there was a problem with black mold at acl last year and i think that they did took some measures to rid the grounds they of sprayed that. the whole place with it bleach. was hella dusty i will say <laughs> we did our best to avoid the dust um we didn't go for as long each day we minimized our time and um really protected purse i mean i had like a sweater on my <laughs> like a sweatshirt on and then like tied to my waist the purse and then the purse was tied to me so if anybody's getting my bag they're like taking the whole the whole person with them i mean i, I actually witnessed a girl like walking by me and was like oh, my phone is gone i'm like sorry girl man been there that stinks yeah <clears throat> um so you went on friday i went with... friday and saturday not attending to but there was a situation with my friend didn't have her friend had couldn't go and so i was like not gonna let her go by herself so i went both days <laughs> and what would you say the highlights and lowlights were for you or what was your favorite and, and what were you surprised by i mean i had this was this was one i mean this sounds really stupid talking about it it's a concert it i had extreme trepidation going into this. I, I was like not sleeping leading up to it. I did not want to go. It was like one of those things where I just really had to face my fears. And it sounds so, so stupid when I'm saying it now. It's a concert, but it's... I mean, it's a it's like it's a, festival. a couple hundred thousand people. Yeah, and it's a big group. It's like large groups of people. Okay, this is the image, y'all. We're leaving after on Saturday night, Saturday is the big, the biggest day. You can buy three day passes mm -hmm. or you can buy just one day. So Saturday is like everybody goes and we stay to the end. We had to find all our members of our party. So everybody <laughs> could ride with us. And then we start to head out and like, it is like soldiers, like head down, just like walking, like barely taking a step. <laughs> there are so many people. It's just like as many people as you can corral into one area. Everybody's just like, you're probably giving some people anxiety just like thinking about that soldiering out of this facility, like cops around you. Just, it was the opposite of social distancing. Oh gosh. It was not social distancing. <laughs> that was the, that was the scene leaving. And, but everybody was, and, and wait, wait, I didn't even tell the best part. We get it. We, we park in this parking garage the night before me and my friend like snuck out like 10 minutes early. So we got to the car and it was fine. It's like a 30 minute walk to get to your car. We got to the car. We sit down in the car. We're like, Oh, we made it. This was night two. I turn on the truck. I like drive, pull out of the parking spot. And then we sat still for 45 <laughs> minutes inside the parking garage. Never even inched. Which was starting. Okay, so to, that was the low light. Was starting to feel like anxiety because mm -hmm. it's fine to crawl out of a parking situation as long as you're moving. You know that, like, and the, like sirens are going off. I'm like, what is happening out there? Like, why are we not even moving? Anyway, we eventually got home. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> oh, highlight. So that was the low light. What was the highlight? If I could sing, I would right now, <laughs> but I can't. Jared Leto. 30 would, seconds to Mars. Yeah. If you would have asked me who I was most excited about, oh, Foo Fighters were there, Elena Morissette, like the Luminaires, the 1975. There were so many names on the list. And if you would have asked me before if 30 seconds to Mars would have been my favorite performance, I never would have, I would have been way down on the list. Yeah. No, they were really, they were really <sighs> so good. good. So and he, good. And he couldn't even sing a lot of it. He was sick. And he like, yeah, he would, he brought in a guest for the kill that song. That's very high, but mm -hmm. he would like let the audience sing. I mean, he did a good job. Yeah. It was a great performance. And like, y'all should, y'all should like look on Instagram, ACL, uh, 30 seconds to Mars or just 30 seconds to Mars. He posted it himself. 
mm-hmm. to get into the stage. He got up on top of the stage, which these are huge stages. It was probably 60 feet in the air. And like, and least. just like was like, had the microphone in his hand and like screamed and then just jumped and like he was attached to some cables. Yeah. He jumped out and then it caught and him like, and he swung back towards the stage. He was like running stage. in the air and it, it was freaking just landed on the stage. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. And like, well, it was, it was so good. It yeah. was so good. I have a little obsession going now. We've been watching documentaries. <laughs> we've been watching all the live performances. Watch out, James Hobart. <laughs> Cheered Leto's in guy, town. He's like... Almost 52 years yeah, old. That was Super wild. impressive. How old, like, you would never know looking at him, but. I bet you just blew somebody's mind who's listening to this. You're like, he's 52 years old. old. About to be 52. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Anyway. That good, big clean, fan. good, clean living. <laughs> yeah. He's a client of ours. Did you guys know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, and one other little funny story. Is that what the podcast is about? <laughs> yeah. That's, and thanks for coming, guys. I thought something was going to happen even before we got in there because, like, it was pretty much a mass exodus to get into this thing, too. Oh, whatever yeah. the opposite of an exodus is. Entrance. <laughs> mass entrance in. So we're all, like, kind of packed in. It was a 30-minute walk from where we parked. Um, so we're walking in, and there's this drunk guy kind of around us where, mm. where we were all walking. And he, Already I get, drunk he, going yeah, into a concert. Yeah, he threw a up scene. a couple times walking in. And then, like, we were, he got behind us and we kept looking back at well, him. Well, me make and my sure. friend Essence were like, me and we and her heard it. And we were, we were behind Jonathan and our other friend. And like, we like scurried in front of them. And cause we did not, we we're like, that guy just threw up twice. Like, Which, I, you don't really want to be in front of somebody who's, well, I was like up. just trying to get away from him. <laughs> yeah. And then y'all were kind of lingering and I was leaning back and told y'all, I was like, guys, like, y'all, come on, this guy. Yeah. And so I think he started noticing that we were looking at him. And, so Alex and I were walking and, and like, I kept looking back at him to make sure we were far enough distance away not in the splash zone and no. he goes something like don't look back at me something like that and like here i am holding a, a metal ice shaker bottle full of water that probably weighed like three pounds and we got a guy with us trained in jujitsu i'm like <laughs> i like our chances against you mr drunk guy so whatever you have to say go for it but we're not going to let you throw up on us <laughs> That was the only incident of the day. Yeah, as far it as wasn't kind of a gross. Stuff. That makes it sound like it's a gross festival. It's not. No, it's a very clean it's festival. Really well they known. have like people cleaning up trash. They have access to like free water, free water bottles. Yeah. Like it's. Are you going to go next year? No, I'm never going again. <laughs> you guys stay tuned. I'm never going in October again. I did of it. It was really fun, but I don't. I don't. It's, it's crowds just that, that big of a crowd is just isn't my thing. I like enjoy it. But then you can't really enjoy the concerts. Like I would rather just go to a thirty seconds to March concert mm-hmm. than go to a festival and see them. I'd rather them just give me like a house concert. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> something sm- like a small venue. <laughs> like you can't really appreciate the shows. You're so far back, and yeah. you're in, and I'm just like constantly. My mind is just maybe she's always like I'm looking always for like, an escape route. Yeah, wherever we stand, I have to know where the exit is and all this stuff. It's it's it's, it's a not a good. Yeah. Not a good scene in there. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't all the, like, all the, like the therapists and counselors are like psychoanalyzing you right now. Being like, <laughs> what happened in your past that you feel this way at music festivals now? Oh, another highlight. If anybody's ever seen like a drone show. Oh, yeah. They're really cool. Like I had never seen one. We didn't even know what was happening the first night. We mean, but just me and my friend went and like we, we started noticing that like the whole place was getting surrounded. This is basically like a Central Park situation in Austin, mm-hmm. like a huge field park and then they take it over with this concert but like all these drones were surrounding the park and i was like this is super weird and then all of a sudden this like drone show just like started happening in the middle like huge it would like form a tree form a yeah. face and then a, like it was like a eight minute drone show that's on youtube too i'll yeah. put a link in the description of this <laughs> oh, yeah, people i this. missed it but it's really cool to watch cool. i didn't even know that was and i possible. did i did feel that it was during the lumineers concert and like everybody like turned their back to them to watch yeah the drone they were probably show. watching while they were performing too <laughs> yeah Okay, well, let's. All right, yeah, let's, that's that a long. That's long. a long intro Sorry. on ACL. We should get a cut from like the ticket sales. I think I calculated that. I'm, I'm guessing just on ticket sales, they make almost a hundred million dollars. They based they on how many. Like well, yeah, yeah, and... but, yeah. They also sell a lot of beer and corn dogs too. So, <laughs> corn dogs. That, I'm just talking about the ticket sales. <laughs> okay, let's get into All this right. episode. We're gonna uh, talk specifically. I'm gonna talk about my five favorite arm exercises for, for hypertrophy. And then you're going to talk about your five favorite leg exercises for hypertrophy. Are you going first? I mean, if you, if you don't know what hypertrophy is, it's just a fancy way of saying muscle growth. Like mm-hmm. you can bias your training for strength and you can bias your training for muscle size. There's a huge overlap between the two. 
I have an entire podcast, two podcasts with Andy Baker about the overlap between the two. So you're not going to get one without the other, but we're talking about biasing your training and choosing our favorite exercises that we like to use when we're specifically trying to grow a muscle. So that's kind of the difference between strength and hypertrophy. Except for I'm known for my glutes and... <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not known for anything, <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, all right. So l before, before we get into the specific exercises, let me just give a little caveat here too. You have to create not only the stimulus for muscle growth through your training for hypertrophy, but you have to also support that with your recovery. And what I'm talking about with that is your extra, your, your sleep and your nutrition. Those are the things that help you actually get better from the stress mm -hmm. that you're putting in, in the gym. So you could do all the things we're going to list in this episode, but if your sleep stinks, if you're constantly in a calorie deficit, you're not eating for performance, you're not eating any carbs, you're not eating enough protein, you're not doing those things. Mm -hmm. All this will be for, for not, and you won't grow your muscles. So <laughs> The, the, I always say the exercise provides the stimulus and the nutrition and the recovery decides if it's going to happen or and, not. And, the, and again, this is not like a workout program we're giving out or anything like that. These are like our five favorite exercises for this. So it's not like these are like in my list, at least it's not like do all five of these right. in a day. Don't, don't do that. Right. It's not, it's not a program to follow, <laughs> yeah. but if you're not doing some of these exercises, yeah. then I would recommend, you know, reaching out to us or or at least mix, starting to mix them into your training. Okay. Okay. More caveats. Hold on. Oh, goodness. The reason that I picked these exercises is because if you want to get bigger muscles, you, the bottom line is you have to be able to get stronger. You know, I talked about the overlap between strength and hypertrophy, but a stronger muscle is a bigger muscle and vice versa. So if you're not getting stronger in an exercise, you're not growing the muscle. So the reason I picked these exercises is because except for one, no, they actually all of them you're able to know that you're getting stronger in them. And that is going to be the thing that makes sure that you're growing the muscle. Also, these are <laughs> exercises that can be like easily increased in weight over time. And that's the secret right. to using progressive overload. Well, I already just pulled up a chair. This is, I know this is the part that's going to take a while. I'll wait for my turn. I think you it's go. important to lay the groundwork and say why <laughs> what we're going to tell people matter. So, all right. all right. My first exercise is known as the Yates row named after the bodybuilder Dorian Yates. Now, if you just go on Google and look around, you'll see different variations of this, but let me tell you what I mean by the Yates row and why I like it so much for, uh, for hypertrophy. And I specifically like the Yates row for hypertrophy in the bicep, which you might be surprised when you hear what it is. This is basically a supinated grip, meaning underhand grip <clears throat> barbell row. And I like the variation where you're rowing it from the floor each rep versus where you're just letting your arms hang down and keeping the weight suspended. So you might be thinking, all right, that's basically like a bent over row. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a back or a lat exercise? Well, yeah, it is. But the bicep is like a secondary mover in any rowing exercise to the lat. And especially with that underhand grip, we're biasing a lot of the weight uh, and a lot of the work over to the bicep versus just the lat. So one of the reasons I like that so much for bicep training is try to think about another exercise where you're going to be able to load that much weight onto the bicep. Can't do it with a dumbbell curl. Can't do it with a barbell curl. You're moving a lot of weight, recruiting a lot of muscle fibers, recruiting a lot of motor units on the bicep because it's loaded so heavily. And, um, I would also recommend if you're going to do these to start off with a light weight to make sure that you understand how to brace your back in a, in a barbell row if you don't have experience mm -hmm. with them. And if you're somebody who's prone to elbow tendonitis, I would recommend probably doing these with uh, straps also, the strap that you can wrap around the barbell and then grab your hand. Um, so that will you know prevent you from getting premature elbow tendonitis. Yeah. And now a little tip with doing these also is when you do the row, Make sure you're pulling the, the barbell. I'm going to demonstrate this in the in the video of this for YouTube. I'm going to bend over a little bit. <laughs> it's hard to stay close to the microphone. What are you doing? Make sure you're pulling the barbell into your belly button area versus up to your rib cage. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna feel same same, the same kind of note we get for for all the rows is finding finding that lat. Muscle well, I'm, and I'm not pulling. Not, right. Yeah, not pulling. Well, the reason I like it position. in the Yates row to pull to the waist. Um, or the belly button versus like, you know, the reason that we do it 
you know, to, mm -hmm. in a row, we usually try to pull to the waist to activate the lat. But in a Yates row, if you just try this a couple of times and you pull to your chest, you'll realize that you can't get much range of motion yeah. by pulling the weight up to your chest. And we really want to flex the elbow a lot to recruit a lot of the bicep, which is where pulling to the waist comes in. Now I would recommend, you know, once you get comfortable with the movement, working in sets of probably eight to 12 on these, and you might be shocked to see how heavy you can, mm -hmm. you can row on these, you know, you might be able to only curl 30 or 35 pound dumbbells if you're a strong male, but you can probably Yates row upwards of 200 pounds. So that shows you like how much on heavier <laughs> on a barbell, yeah, on a barbell, um, how much heavier yeah. you're able to load your biceps. But like you said, start, you know, start with something that, you know, your form is solid on and kind of like we do with everything, like maybe on these, you could add 10 pounds of every working set, you know? Yeah. And as you work in that range of six to 12 reps, you want to use double progression overload to be able to like get up to the top of the rep range for all your mm -hmm. sets. And then the next workout that you do them add a little bit of weight, your, your reps will drop back down and repeat that process mm -hmm. over and over again. I think we should, I wrote, I wrote reps down for mine too. I think we should give like a rep recommendation, mm -hmm. but for everything, I think like I would, if you're adding something to a program, I would start with three sets. And then Agreed. after you've established and you've kind of gotten, you've done that for a while and you feel like you've maybe stalled out on progress add a fourth set and same situation in up to like adding a fifth set. I'm with you. Okay. All right. You do one. I'm let's tired. just go. I'm tired. Let's do all yours okay. because it, we want to stay with the arms. <clears throat> my, my voice hasn't oh. completely recovered from all the singing that I did oh, along yeah. with Jared Leto, but okay. <laughs> Second one that I picked is a tricep exercise called the lying tricep extension. These set, I've heard these called squats for your arms. <laughs> That's funny. If you want to grow your arms, you need to be doing LTEs as they're known. I know I started doing these probably back in 2016 and man, what a difference they've made. If you think about it, your tricep for the, all the people watching on the video, your tricep is made up of three heads. And really, if you think about Where this, is your tricep? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't, I need do, drop you need, do you need me to demonstrate? Let me drop down and do some push ups. but your tricep of, is made up of three heads. One, you can't really see here in the middle. And then the other two are on the outer edges of that. So you have a huge amount of muscle mass that makes up your tricep compared to just your bicep. So if you're trying to have bigger arms, dudes, you need to be working the dudes. muscles of your arms <laughs> that make up the arms. most of the mass. So, you know, if the tricep makes up two thirds of your <clears throat> arm, you should be working on those muscles a lot. And, and the LTE is one of the um, exercises that you can load the heaviest that goes through the longest range of motion on your triceps, mm -hmm. specifically the long head of your tricep, which is that one that's along the backside. If you were like, hold your arm up and uh, flex your bicep pose, it's the one that hangs down underneath there. So that's one of the reasons to target that head with LTEs. Now, LTEs get mixed up with skull crushers a lot, but there is a difference. The LTE has a longer range of motion than a, a skull crusher, and it also puts your shoulder in a different position. Mm -hmm. You're in an LTE, your shoulder is in extreme flexion. Like it is up about, about as high back as you can reach. It's like Basically, almost putting you're your, pulling the weight behind your head on the LTE, right? Like not you know, a skull crusher is like, you're bringing the weight, your elbow stays standing, you're bringing the weight almost like to your skull, like right. <laughs> where you would, if you dropped it, it would land on your head. That's why it's one of the jobs of the tricep is to flex the shoulder like that. So yeah. if we can put a big stretch on it at the end range of motion, we can let it rock forward just a little bit, activate even more of the tricep. And then we really fire it up when we mm -hmm. completely close the shoulder, the elbow joint. There. We have a good video demonstration on both a barbell and a dumbbell on these. And you can really notice if you notice two things, in these videos, it's like the amount that the shoulder does fall back. Mm -hmm. And then that th whenever you come up into that starting position, again, you don't like rest the arm mm -hmm. straight over your body. You leave like a sort of an angle. Um, yeah, you keep in a, you it's don't hard want to explain it. You, you don't want like to point the, it toward the back wall. The Always end range like, of yeah. motion is not with your arm completely like stacked, perpendicular yeah. to the ground. There's like an angle to it. You keep the tricep stretched at all time, mm -hmm. even once your elbow is completely yeah. locked out. Um, definitely practice this one with light weights before you yeah. do anything because it is a little bit of an awkward, it takes some coordination, um, but it's definitely worth it. And then I find with a lot of people, it's easier if, if you, uh, I, I instruct them to like let their arms open up a little bit when they're laying back on the bench. Don't try to keep your elbows in really tight. 
for most people, that's going to be difficult to get that full range of motion and that big stretch on the tricep. Let your arms flare out a little bit and open up the shoulder joint. And when you get to the top, what are you laughing I at? I just have, I have memory burn about winter time. We were demonstrating, we were doing these at my gym and, um, I had it on the easy curl bar yeah. and I was laid back on the bench and it had too much weight on there. And I like, got, <laughs> I remember getting like stuck yeah. and I got it back up, but then like, I couldn't do anything with the bar. And I was like, I had to like yell for help. And I just remember every, it was like this whole embarrassing situation. Yeah. Like I'm stuck over here. <laughs> but you bring up a good point. Like you can do this with dumbbells in a neutral grip, hold them like this, yeah. or you can hold them, do it on an easy curl. You can do them with a straight, a bar, straight too. bar too. It's a little bit more awkward because of the wrist angle. It's well, easier I think with it's weird. It's, it's awkward bar. because of the length of that bar. That's true. Like, you need a lot of room. The easy curl bar is like a shorter bar. And so I, I think I like that better. And I like the hand angles. Yeah. But like with that easy curl bar, you can load these things. I think like, you know, when I was really progressively overloading these last year and the beginning of this year, I think I got up to where I was doing over 90 pounds mm -hmm. on LTEs, but uh, so it's, you know, that's why they're called squats for your arms. Cause you can load them really heavy. You're not going to find mm -hmm. another tricep exercise that you're loading up with 90 pounds. Yeah. So if you guys have an easy curl bar, I think common, like a lot of people don't know what they weigh. Commonly they weigh 20 pounds. That's, yeah. The one with that's the, this guy here with like the, <laughs> the angled handles. Yeah. The shorty with the angles. So I like doing, um, LTEs and sets of eight to 15 for okay. myself. There's something that you should load heavy. Um, if you've never done these before and you, start them next week you're going to be sore mm -hmm. after you do these because of that massive stretch that it puts on your triceps so be ready for that i'll say triceps is triceps is one of those exercises that it varies where people feel it mm -hmm. like client to client it's like some people really feel those some people are like <laughs> i don't feel them yeah. and it's not a product of like you're not moving right it, mm -hmm. and the same thing with like a, an overhead tricep extension a kickback like some I'm, i always ask people like which one of these mm -hmm. do you feel the most yeah because like sometimes and I like, that's why I vary tricep exercises so much yep. in our program because like it just hits people certain ways <laughs> and it's then true. some people, I hear people you know. poo poo on tricep kickbacks all the time, but man, I feel a huge muscle contraction on mm -hmm. tricep. Kickbacks. If you're not like, if you don't like swinging them like crazy right. and you're actually like, you know, doing them, I think you, yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. All okay. Right. On to the next one, the barbell curl. Okay. And I'm talking here specifically about the straight bar yeah. that you squat with, uh, not the easy curl bar. The reason that I like the barbell curl so much for hypertrophy is because it recruits the most amount of muscle fibers because of the position of the wrist and because you can load it up heavier than basically any other curl variation. Mm -hmm. For those of you guys that are watching the video version of this, if you're driving in your car, you could even try this too. If you're at a stoplight, hold your arm out or hold, hold your arm down to your side with your, with your hand out in front of you, like your elbows at 90 degrees, look at your bicep. And now rotate your wrist back and forth. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that <laughs> different part of my bicep is flexing just as I'm rotating my wrist, even though my elbow isn't moving. One of the jobs of the bicep is to take this, you take your wrist through this range of motion. So when your wrist is completely supinated like this, you're activating more bicep. So that's why in a barbell curl in this position loaded heavily, you're recruiting a ton of mm -hmm. muscle fibers. And that's the reason that I like it the most. Just make sure when you're doing these, you're going through a full range of motion. A lot of people get concerned that when they're at the top of a barbell curl, that their elbow comes in front of their torso a little bit and they feel like they're cheating. But that's actually one of the roles of the bicep too, is to bring the shoulder into that position. So it's okay if your elbow rocks forward a little bit at the top of a barbell curl, it's probably unrealistic for you to keep them completely yeah. locked in at your side. The you thing that don't you don't want. want is create a bunch of momentum at the beginning and end of re right. each rep like by we bending your waist. Like if you're, if you're bringing, if you find yourself bringing like your chest forward, <laughs> yeah. when you're doing a curl, <laughs> right. that's, that's an indication it's, it's too heavy. And like you said, a little bit of elbow movement, but not like if you find yourself and you like look in the mirror and you see like, Oh, my elbow's like almost pointing straight ahead when I'm done with this curl, that's, that's way too much elbow movement in, yeah. that, in that curl. And, um, a couple of other tips on barbell curls is, take a wider stance than you think you should, yeah. especially as you're getting strong and these are getting heavy. I mean, I would take a 
shoulder width stance at least, if not a little bit wider, and then actively flex your legs and glutes to give you a really stable mm -hmm. base. If you stand with your feet really close together and you're kind of in this passive position, you're much more likely to try to like lean back to get the weight up, which is going to put more stress on your low back. Yeah. So even though it's an isolation exercise, take it seriously, brace like you would for a heavier lift. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can aggravate your back with curls. Sure. It, it's a weird idea. Yeah, you don't want to overextend. And, you don't want to overextend position. or like let it pull you, like I said, rocking you back and forth constantly. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as yeah. kipping barbell curls <laughs> <laughs> or there shouldn't be. I like to do barbell curls in sets of eight to 15. Um, I think that's really the sweet spot for yeah. making progress in those. Speaking of making progress, this goes for all of these barbell exercises, especially the ones that are more single joint isolation, like a barbell curl. It would be a really good idea for you to invest in some fractional plates. Mm. You know, most people, when they go order their weights online, they'll get weights that go down to five pound plates. If not, if they're lucky, they'll get two and a half. Yeah. But that means you have to make jumps five pounds at mm -hmm. a time. And that's hard yeah. on certain exercises, even overhead pressing with a Especially, barbell. Yeah, particularly the upper body, like right. to be able to, you know, strict press and then add five pounds to your strict press is once you, once you get to those top ranges, it's a lot. I mean, our fractional plates go down to an eighth of a pound <laughs> each. Yeah. So you can really, really micro load, but as long as you're getting stronger, who cares if you're going up a half pound at yeah. a time? Like the point is you're, you're using progressive overload and your muscles are getting bigger and stronger if you're able to go up and wait and do more reps over mm -hmm. time. So I'll, tr I'll put a link in the show notes or the description of this, um, for some fractional plates. But that if you recommend. don't have those, adding that fourth set is a good next move right there. If you have kind of tapped out and you, but you find like, if I move up five pounds, I'm yeah. swinging the weight or moving my elbow too much. The downside keep, of that yeah. is it takes more time. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> but if you, so, but yeah, if, go ahead if and time add, is, a, is, yeah. a, is a concern. Get the fractionals. <laughs> if you got time, do as many sets as you, as you mm -hmm. can. All right. Moving on. All right. Another curl. Okay. We gave a lot of love to the triceps on the LTEs. We're giving more love to the biceps. I like curls done in full shoulder extension. What that means is your arm is behind your body as far as it can go. Maybe you're thinking like, how the heck are you going to do a curl with your arm behind your body? So this could be done laying on an incline bench with your arm hanging down behind you, or this could be done with a pair of bands that are attached to some kind of anchor on a wall mm -hmm. and then you step forward and you keep your elbow back behind you. There's a lot of recent research on doing partial range reps in the fully stretched position, which is what that is. Your bicep is fully stretched when your arms back behind you about how that can be superior for muscle growth. But you know, bodybuilders that didn't have <laughs> access to this research a long time ago, were just doing <laughs> these kinds of exercises, hitting the muscle from all different kinds of angles. And I think that's good enough, despite whatever the research is saying, but it's further validation that my preference for these is awesome and that you should be doing them too. Uh, it basically does the same thing for your bicep that an LTE does. It puts it in that fully stretched position. So you're really using all the muscle fibers and you're putting them under a ton of tension. Mechanical tension is one of the primary drivers of muscle growth and by fully stretching a muscle at the end range. That's what's happening. Kind of like you do a, a fly where you're laying on your back and you really stretch mm -hmm. the chest out at the bottom. That's the kind of stuff that will make you sore, but it does lead to muscle growth too. Another way to do these is called a drag curl where you hold the barbell in the bottom position of the curl. But then instead of just flexing your elbow up and bringing the, the weight up in an arc, you actually pull your elbow back and drag the weight up your torso. So if you think about it, it puts the elbow back behind mm -hmm. you, just like the other curl variations do. So if you don't have access to a really sturdy anchor, you could give these mm -hmm. a try to, uh, and especially just if you don't have dumbbells. another way to load it. Yeah. But we recently did those band curls and I was really surprised because we do bicep work all the time, but those band curls really <laughs> you were so me. sore. I was sore for a good three days from those. They're killer, man. And, and if you're somebody who has elbow pain now, or you're prone to getting elbow mm. tendonitis, this variation might be good for you just because of the different position of the shoulder. It'll hit your bicep in a little different way. So experiment with that. We like to use the crossover symmetry mm -hmm. bands, which are really made for shoulder rehab for these because they have a nice handle on yeah. them. But I know there's tons of knockoff brands of yeah. crossover symmetry too. If you're just using like the regular TheraBands, you might be limited on how you're going to anchor it to the, to the wall behind you and how they can get a little dangerous, <laughs> how hard you can grip it without it slipping out of your yeah. hand too. 
Um, I recommend, I mean, speaking of, this is just a bump for them, but crossover symmetry, I, I recommend those bands. Yeah. We've had the knockoffs and like at the gym. I mean, I, I've had these crossover symmetries since I opened my gym. Solid, super solid. I think I've, only one pair is worn out. And they replaced it after many, many years. <laughs> and then like, um, we've had the knockoff ones and like, they just lose their elasticity yeah. and like phew, become like a it's like big, a, long, you know, rubber band with no band anymore. <laughs> and, but anyway, yeah, they can they're, be they're a solid product. Yeah. I think they're a couple hundred bucks for, for a, set a set of four, but yep. yeah. Um, I like doing these kinds of curls and sets. Well, with the band, I like doing these in sets in big range sets, like sets of 15 to 20 mm -hmm. to get a real big pump. And you can even do these. I put a, a reel up on Instagram last week about doing like 21s in yeah. this with your elbow in that behind the torso position. Holy smokes. I think that I think that's what I did that actually made me so sore mm. using these mm -hmm. bands. But uh, yeah, that's one of my favorites too. All right. Okay, last one. We have to give the chest a little bit of love, the chest, and a little bit more love to the tricep. I'm talking about close grip dumbbell bench. A lot of people know about close grip barbell bench, where you basically just take like a slightly narrower than shoulder width uh, grip on the barbell. But the close grip dumbbell bench is where you're laying flat on your back, and this works best with the hex hexagon shaped dumbbells because you can really put them together but you actually touch the dumbbells together when they're at the top of the rep and then you keep them together even pushing them together a little bit as you lower the weight down to you mm -hmm. one of the roles of the chest is to bring the arm across the body towards the middle adduction so by by putting the arms in this position already when you go through that range of motion from top to bottom you're getting this little like contraction in the chest as you pump mm -hmm. the weight up and down so and you feel it in your triceps a yeah, lot. Yeah, it really the isolates the, the tricep too, and it really puts a lot of pressure in the middle of the chest. So if you've never done these before, kind of like I said with the uh, band curls, these are probably going to make you sore too. I like these a lot. I like these way better than I like barbell, close grip barbell bench. I don't know why I've always, I always, I like the yeah, close grip dumbbell. They're a really cool variation. Yeah. Some people call them like a crush grip because you're like mm -hmm. pushing the, the, the dumbbells together a little bit. Basically, the more you focus on pushing the dumbbells together, the more you're probably going to feel it in your chest, the more activation you're going to get on your chest. So if you're primarily using it as a chest exercise, emphasize pushing them together. If you're primarily using it as a supplement for your triceps, focus less on that and just yeah, try I to actually load them heavier note for people not to like excessively push them together to keep, to keep them together, but not like actively push the dumbbells. Yeah. I just, into each I other. would just say experiment with it. See where you're feeling it the most, like mm -hmm. all these exercises. If it's something that you're getting a good mind muscle connection with and you're getting a good, getting a good contraction mm -hmm. on, that's a good stimulus for you to, to for muscle growth. If it's something that you don't, feel mm -hmm. yeah then it's, then it's not for you yep. one more tip on these is just like any kind of bench press variation we want these to be relatively safe for your shoulder and the best way to do that is by retracting your shoulder blades back behind you in your setup and by focusing on pushing your chest up in the air a little bit and then to get a little bit more um, chest and front delt activation if you want to do these instead of just lowering the weights just straight up and down like this get a little bit of an arc kind of like you do in a bench mm -hmm. press as you bring the weight down, touching kind of uh, down in the sternum area versus like up, up in your mid or high mm -hmm. chest. All right. I like to do Ooh. these in sets of eight to 15. You might be surprised gentlemen, how heavy you can load these as Why you get you stronger. Why are you talking to the gentleman? This I don't know. Just for guys. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Edit that out producer. <laughs> You've said it in almost every exercise. I'm like, this is not a myth. I mean, I guess this is just upper body. It, it, it can they're, be they're it's just, men and women. I, yeah. Well, these are favorite. I said arm exercises um, yeah, but, in the intro, but I think all in all, I mean, women of course want to have nice arms too, but I think, you know, we're talking hypertrophy. A lot of men just want to have bigger arms to fill out their, fill out their sleeves more. Am I wrong? I'm not wrong, but it's okay for women to do those exercises. Of course it's too. okay for women to do this. I program these, these exercises for women every single week. <laughs> Are now, you done? Now, now, now I feel self-conscious. Yeah, you should. Jeez. I'm Go gonna, back and listen to this. I'm going to get canceled. Um, I would say, I, I at the beginning of this, I was going to say that like I think like guys would probably gravitate toward what you were talking about, and women might gravitate toward what I'm talking about. But I think Pun that... Pun intended on the butt. But <laughs> there's a lot of guys walking around out there. 
pancake butt that need these exercises. So this is this, my list is not a woman's exercise. My list of is course. for how to grow. There is no such thing as a body. man's exercise and a woman's I know. I'm exercise. just saying that like there are preferences for sure. Yes, a but bias. I think that like I know men like to fill out their sleeves and their shirt, but you should also fill out your pants <laughs> with the. <laughs> hey, watch out! You're gonna, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna put your foot in your mouth yeah. like I did. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. What is your first exercise on that list for filling out your pants? I need to cut that part out. Um, <laughs> my first one is heel elevated goblet squats. So elevating that heel really puts the focus on the quads. Mm -hmm. And if you struggle with range of motion, if you put it, if you prop up your heel and I like to use, like I use like the 10 pound or 15 pound plate. Mm-hmm. So what is that? Bumper plates. When, no, I mean, what is that in inches? About an inch people? and a half. Okay, so inch to an inch and a half. Two inches maybe. Elevation on the heel. If you struggle with like getting full depth squats, elevate that heel mm -hmm. and you will be amazed at how it's, deep the, you can squat with It like these. fixes ankle mobility in a jiffy. Yeah, Not I will fix, say that, it, that like you want to really make sure that, you know, practice this with no weight first. Make sure that you're really sending your hips back and that... If you have any kind of knee pain going on already with squats, these put a lot of focus on the knees. Mm -hmm. So you will, I felt it in my, I never feel squats in my knees and I feel these in my knees if I, when I just first get started. Yeah. So I just put that caution out there, but, um, I love them for, for quad development. Um, you know, like we said before, three to five sets of up to like 20 reps yeah. and you know, you want to use a heavy weight to where like once you're topping around 20 you're pretty fatigued. Yeah. I think it would be easy to, for this not to give anybody any muscle growth if they heard what you said and they were like, okay, I'm going to do this for like a 15 pound dumbbell. Right. Right. I would, right. I like, I use a 50. Right. <laughs> so like, you know, you want to hold something heavy yeah. to, to, to do these. But I mean, like anything, start with like a 25, then a 30, then a 35, you know, yeah. just keep building. You'll feel, you'll feel these. You, yeah. You'll put the weight down and go for like <laughs> to walk around the room and be like, oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My second one is a kind of the opposite here, a deficit step back lunge. So this is where you're standing. I like to, again, use, I use a 25 and a 15 pound plate. I like to use a pretty significant deficit. You want to kind of graduate into the mm -hmm. deficit that you're using. But so what would you start with? Like what's a 15 pound plate in inches, like two inches? About an inch and a half. Okay. So you start with like an inch and a half deficit and then grow that yeah. as as your stability and um, ability sees fit. But so you're standing up on a, on a, on on a plate it. and then you lunge, you do a step back lunge behind you and you, your knee goes on the ground. So you're just really putting that stretch into this position. Mm -hmm. um, I'm noticing a theme here that like a lot of these exercises involve a huge stretch. Yeah. So Across the board, when I do a lunge, I always prefer the step back lunge. And we've talked about this a lot of times on the, on the podcast, like a step forward lunge is probably like when you just say do a lunge, that's probably what people mm -hmm. instinctively do. And to me that put like those lunges, like put so much pressure on your knee to stand up. Cause if you think about yourself, you step forward whenever you're ready to pull your foot back to the standing position, you're just like pushing off that front foot and you're using your knee to mm -hmm. pull yourself back. But if you're standing in a, you know, standing still and you step behind you, you're using your posterior chain to pull your body back into position. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do with these lunges. I mean, I like walking lunges, you know, as a variation. So that's a step forward. But overall, when I do a lunge, always a step back. Um, so this one is, I would do like six to 10 reps a leg in a set. I mean, this, this gets into like hashtag cardio for sure. <laughs> Especially as they <laughs> so, get heavy. Yeah. So I would, I would find a weight. You can do this with a goblet, like a single object. You can do double dumbbell. You can do a full barbell with weight, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, whatever you're ready for six to 10 reps per leg on these. I would say like when you do these, like if you're doing them for the first time, go ahead and set up your deficit. And then as you do those first reps, go really slow. So you kind of feel out where your knee is going to end up. Yeah. Like you don't want to just load it up and just start doing these. Cause it, you, you might not be, you might be surprised when you feel your knee 
land where you think it's going to land, but hmm. it, it keeps going. I've felt a little unstable on these until I get into a flow. Yeah. So, so even like I've done them a million times at this point, my first set, I'll go real slow on those first ones in my warm up to make sure I know exactly how far my knee is going to go down. Oh yeah. If you've never done these before, start with no weight, like don't add weight, do, do three sets of like six with no weight yeah. and move on for the day. And then, you know, once you're comfortable, start adding weight to these, I would definitely, definitely don't. Cause these will make you sore. Yeah. Don't start with like a barbell or anything on these. And then as I don't know if you have other lunges in here, but as with any lunge, when you step forward or step back, step slightly out to the side too, instead of straight behind mm -hmm. you. So you create a little bit more of a stable base. So you don't, yeah. so you don't tip over. These are, these are harder to do because you ha you're starting on this smaller base, like starting on the plate, but still like you never want to put your feet like directly touching each other in right. a lunge. And I think that's what, anytime I'm coaching a lunge, that's the common thing I see is people stepping like with their feet touching each other yeah. and it sends you like off balance. You're so, like a, on a tight rope. Yeah. Give yourself like at least a hip width stance. So you just have that stability. I like it. All right. Third one is an RDL. Heck yeah. Um, so an RDL is a Romanian deadlift. This is where the weight, the deadlift actually starts from the hang. So you have your weight, either dumbbells or a barbell at the hang position, and you're pushing your hips back, bringing the bar down your legs to just about mid shin. The weight is not coming to the floor. If it's a barbell and then you're pulling it back up, it puts a huge stretch in the hamstrings. Um, For anybody who doesn't know what the hang means, just means like each rep starts from the top of a deadlift. Yeah, lift, you're like, standing straight up. Right, instead yeah. of from the floor. Like a deadlift starts with dead lifting weight off the floor. So yeah. weights resting on the floor, you deadlift it up to, you know, up to your waist and then back down. Mm -hmm. So this is opposite. Um, so a couple of notes on these is... You know, anytime I'm coaching someone doing these for the first time, my first comment is like, push your hips back mm -hmm. more than you think. That's really where you're going to feel mm -hmm. that giant stretch in your hamstrings. Um, second note is always like, as you're bringing the weight always on a deadlift, it's always like right down your legs, never right over the middle of your never foot. in front of you, always like driving down your legs, touching your pants. Um, but keep your shoulder just in front of the weight that puts the even more stretch in that hamstring. Yeah. If you can push your hips back and your shoulders forward at the same time, you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. while, while that weight is right along while keeping your legs. back neutral and flat. Yep. So on these, I like to do, you want to load them heavy. So I like to do around eight to 15 reps on these. So like I said, these can be done with dumbbells. I, I like both versions. Honestly, I really like the dumbbell version a lot. <laughs> I feel like you can, yeah. there's, there's both the, you can have the heavy weight, but you also have, you know, a little bit of like stability and coordination and control with, you know, holding two weights yeah. versus one barbell. If you're somebody who like, oh, I have really tight hamstrings. These are great for stretching your hamstrings because mm -hmm. you're stretching it under a load too. Yeah. You can gain more range of motion over time through doing RDLs. Mm -hmm. The thing about, I like dumbbells too. The heaviest dumbbells we have are 75s, which yeah. is, which is fine. But like if, you know, if you're a guy who can deadlift 350 or 400, 405 pounds like there's a good chance your work sets of rdls need to be in the 200 and up range if you're going to be in that rep range that you mentioned mm -hmm. so that's where switching over to the barbell can be yeah so you don't have to do for, like too many reps right awesome all right my next one are weighted box step overs oh <laughs> <laughs> i love these for for the lower body it's it's i mean it's really it's 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 everything everything lower body in mm -hmm. these. It's like you're, you know, driving with your quad, you're pushing off your back foot, you're, you're, you're using your back for stability. You know, your hamstrings are involved. You have bonus grip strength and bonus like balance and coordination in these yeah. two is just like being able to hold weight, get up. And I, I particularly like the step over version of these where you're not completely standing up on top of the box and you're stepping, you're turning on the box and stepping off the other side. It's a lot of time under tension. Yeah. I, I find those, I feel like I can do more weight and just the flow of those to me is better than when you just step on the box, stand all the way up and then step back down. Okay. Um, those will also give these, you a little bit of a cardiovascular workout. I did workout. actually write that note. <laughs> they will definitely give you cardio. So si similar reps to a lunge, I would go like six to 10 reps a leg. So, you know, when you're getting up to those 10 reps a leg, that's 20, 20 reps in a row holding weight, you're getting cardio, you're getting great grip strength. Yeah. You're these. working your traps on those too. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so again, like anything start and I always suggest for everybody to, for these I would rather you go with a heavier weight in your hand in a lower box. 
so that you are not like, like your, your, your back is involved obviously to, mm -hmm. to stabilize, but I don't want you using your back yeah. to get up on the box. So if the, if the box is too high, sometimes people will like use their back to get up on the box and that's not what we but want. They just fold over at the waist and try to get some way to step up yeah. on there and then like hinge up and it's like hinge all this pressure on your yeah. back. So I would always rather you lower the box for safety, but go heavier on the weight Drive with than your try legs. to do like a super high box, but have like not a lot of weight in your hands. Yeah. So I recommend like women, probably like that 15 inch box, maybe the 20, depending on how tall you are. And then men like the 20, mm -hmm. maybe the 24. Yeah, if you're tall, maybe the 24, like over six feet or something. Mm -hmm. It's weird. Like I remember at my gym, like I, I have, I have like long legs, but I always like gravitate toward that lower box. I feel like, but I remember like Bailey at the gym where she was shorter than me, but she could do the 20 like easily on those. It's, it's just something about. She was short, but she had really long femurs too. Yeah. Yeah. So it just depends on how you're set up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last one is the sumo deadlift. Mm. So the sumo deadlift is um, where you're, you're taking a much wider stance than a traditional deadlift. Think of a sumo wrestler, how they stand with their legs wide and your hands are inside your legs. Normally we are standing for a deadlift. Our hands are outside of our legs. So with the sumo deadlift, you're recruiting tons of glutes because of our stance and tons of hip. Mm -hmm. Um, again, you're going to keep whenever you, whenever you drive this weight, you're going to be pushing your butt back. Mm -hmm. And you're going to keep your shoulders over the weight, not di not directly like over the weight, but just in front yeah. to drive this weight off the ground. Yeah. The point isn't to set up like as if you had a trap bar where you're squatting the weight yeah, you off wanna... the ground. You're still keeping it as a hinging movement to get yeah. the glutes involved. Anytime you're doing a deadlift, those two, those two little hints are good is I like to have people like keep their shins fairly vertical. Um, their like their hips back and the weight just, or their shoulders just in front of the weight. Yeah. That's like when your shoulders are just over the weight, that's when your deadlift becomes a squat. Yep. If you can get your shoulders just over the weight and just in front of it, that's when it becomes a deadlift yeah. movement and just works a different set of muscles. Keeps it a hinge Yep. instead of a push. All right. So I gave, um, oh, and those about 10 to 15 reps. Okay. So I'd rather go on those. I'm not using this for You're, strength. Right. Like I'm using this for some volume. You're getting glute volume in yeah. with the sumo deadlifts. Yep. I'm glad you didn't put hip thrusts in there. Cause I don't like doing hip thrusts. <laughs> I do like those too, but I just, you know, trying to narrow my list down. Yeah. Um, okay. So I did add some bonus stuff here. Ooh, bonus I, stuff. I, you know, we write all right finishers a lot for our, for our members and some of the things that I like to add in finishers. So if we've done any of these exercises, a little bonus finisher, get a hip circle. If you guys don't have a hip circle, because these things are great. This is like a really tight fabric band that you put around your legs above your knees mm -hmm. and you do squats with them. You can do glute bridges with them. You can do this thing called a quadruped hip extension where you're holding one of the side of the band down with your knee and you're like donkey kicking your leg up. You can do like monster walk where you're like thinking about like how a monster would walk forward and back, like taking really wide steps. And what this thing is constantly doing is constantly trying to push your legs together and you're trying to push them apart mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. So any of those movements with the hip circle, I, I like to put in finishers anywhere from 15 to 30 reps at a time, like three times through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like in the very beginning of this, I said, the reason that I picked a lot of these exercises is because that you can progressively overload because getting stronger is like a, a non-negotiable for building muscle size. So the stuff like the hip circle and different exercises like that, that give you a really good burn. Mm -hmm. Like those can be great for accumulating more total fatigue and stress on the muscle, which is a huge contributor to hypertrophy too. It's just harder to progressively overload. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's why it. we throw them in at the end of a strength and hypertrophy workout to accumulate more volume, not necessarily because next week we're going to try to do 40 <laughs> hip, right. you know, cir hip, hip circle squats and then 45 yeah. and then 46. So all this stuff works together to help grow your muscles, mm -hmm. but they're not the foundation, but they're, they're fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, they give you a big pump yep. and they can make you sore too. <laughs> All right. If you guys, I'll just wrap up with by saying, if you guys haven't been listening to our business series podcast, if you're a coach or you know a coach or you're a small business owner, tune into those two, they won't go on forever. So take advantage of them 
why they're rolling. We're going to put the Monday motivation podcast on hold until we wrap up the business series, but don't worry, they will return also. I was also going to note if, if you're new to the podcast and you do like any of the movements that you heard here, you can go to our website, just digitalbarbell.com slash free. And we have a bunch of freebies there, but specifically download the abs arms and you know, the rest program. I mean, we talked about it, all those things in here and you're going to see all of that stuff yeah. most likely in that program. It's abs arms and you know, the rest is, is what the focus of that program is. Yeah. So it's five weeks. It's, it's a great, like if you're not, the whole point of that um, giveaway was if you're like, going to the gym or doing running or doing orange theory or any of these things. And you're not like seeing visible results from your workouts, add this to your current routine to see some visible results. Yep. All right, cool. Go to digitalbarbell.com slash free. Get all that. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you next week.